Brian, unfortunate with the calling off of the Oval game today. Yeah, I think everybody's disappointed. You know, the Oval were up here. Uh, we wanted the game on. Um, but at the end of the day, I think you've got to use a bit of common sense. <clears throat> Part of my thinking as well was that you've got you know 250 Oval fans that were scheduled to come up and drag and come up three and a half hours, um, 180 odd miles. Mm -hmm. You know, and the risk I had, what was in my head was that the temperature is, is forecast to go to minus three and minus four during the game, which would obviously freeze the pitch. And I think, you know, the last thing you need is a bit of stick for, you know, for the game then being abandoned when people have travelled 180 miles to then have a round trip back again. Um, it wouldn't be fair. And I think sometimes you've used common sense and say, well, if the forecast is correct and it is as it is, OK, the pitch isn't 100% today. Um, but and it wasn't probably wasn't going to get much better and but then it's just the element of risk and I think sometimes you know in football quite often we don't look after the fans but I think mm -hmm. in this instance we really do have to think about the travelling distances you know had it been a Walsall or a Port Vale we were playing then it might have been a different we could probably have left it later and made sure the you know the, the forecast was accurate but I think in, um, we have to look after them, not just the players' safety as well, but also you know those travelling, even our supporters as well, that could be travelling distance to come to the semi-final of a national competition. I mean, if anyone in the me now looks out the window, beautiful blue sky and sunshine, but it's still bitterly cold. Yeah, it's still very cold and the forecast hasn't changed. It's still to be... I, mean, I don't think it was necessarily even the snow that was concerning me, because um, snow you can usually clear and yeah. provides a bit of an insulation as well, but um, I think it was more of the temperatures that... You know, when the covers come off and you start and players try and warm up at half six, seven o'clock tonight, and then you've got, you know, trying to play in it when it becomes certain areas will probably come harder than others. Um, but minus three, minus four, it's not ideal to play a game. Uh, we probably never play that on a Saturday game because we don't get to that kind of temperatures, mm -hmm. but um, I think it was common sense. <coughs> With it, the covers have been on since Wednesday, one, yeah. so the pitch underneath <coughs> is okay, but as you say, as yeah. soon as you take the covers off, Things you know, freeze under zero. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the covers will do normally, from my experience, and I've had plenty of it over the years, living where I've come from. Um, normally they'll co come to about minus two and minus three. Um, at best, they'll, co they'll, they'll, they'll obviously hold the frost off. Um, but the, the issue is because it's going to be you know, colder than that, even during the game, as soon as you take the covers off, it's just going to freeze up and become slippy. And I don't think any either team want injured players injured. And to be honest with you, the thought is, you know, you've got supporters coming out, you know, OK, it wouldn't be the biggest crowd of the season tonight, um, but you've got supporters coming out and, and it's not a pleasant atmosphere for everybody. You know, I think they're saying minus three, minus four tonight, but the wind chills, it's supposed to be, the real feels actually less than that. So, you know, it's not really the most pleasant place to come. Charlton was cold enough on Saturday, never mind that, at, at quarter to eight on a, on a Tuesday night. People are looking at it and say, why don't we try and get a dome? <coughs> it's something we looked into and just couldn't do. Yeah, we did. Um, we looked at this. Dave Saltman, to be fair to him, was very proactive and looked at the forecast. I think it was last Thursday he contacted me and said, look, I'm getting slightly concerned because of the forecast. And we obviously have been monitoring that since Thursday, since he flagged up. I personally have been. Um, he spoke about a dome. He inquired about getting a dome to cover it. Um, and I've got to be honest with you, it's about £15,000 to hire a dome for a week. Um, but if it got the game on, obviously it's a live Sky game as well. Um, we would have looked at it um, just to get the game played and out of the way. Um, but there was none available. They were all booked out, obviously, as well. So, you know, sometimes sometimes you just have to get beaten by the weather. Mm -hmm. And that's what we've, we've done. The good thing is, you know, the, the tie's been... We've moved, we, we started speaking to the EFL about it yesterday when we thought there was, there was potentially some doubt um, if the forecast was as it came out. And, you know, to, to play it next Tuesday is probably ideal just to get it... Um, it's, it's not a long time for people to wait and uh, hopefully the Oval fans will still continue to come. I think it was 250 or so, as I say, we're expected to come along. So, you know, hopefully it, it being in Sky have taken it again next Tuesday, which is positive as well. Tickets <coughs> as well, valid. Don't know how yeah. bought for this. Next Tuesday, just turn up as normal. Yeah, basically all we'll do is change the date on the system. So, um, providing everything works as it always does. Uh, with our ticketing system, I'm sure that the tickets will work fine and no, it's all seriousness, they will. It's just a change, change, change in the date. Anybody buys a ticket now will have the new date on it and anybody who buys a ticket who's bought, previously bought a ticket, they will be valid. If anybody can't make next Tuesday, obviously contact the ticket office and we'll, we'll refund them. One thing as well which comes up when this happens is people talk about under soil heating. And coming from Scotland, you've got quite a bit of a yeah. knowledge of that. Yeah, in, in, in Scottish football at the time we had to have, all well, the Premiership teams had to have under soil heating. Um, now, I obviously, it's a member I had it, um, and I did a, a, a cost 
which is probably about eight years ago now, six to eight years ago, of how much it actually costs to, to run under soil heating. <coughs> and I reckon it would cost between eight and ten thousand pounds to have under soil heating on mm -hmm. for a game. And because obviously if you've got a game on the Saturday, for example, you actually need to put it on on the Tuesday so it heats up so it gets to the level of temperature. You then need to have it on from the Tuesday, for example, right the way through to the end of the game. Um, and I remember tallying up, you know, cost wise, it was roughly seven hundred and fifty pound overnight. So if you double that or treble that, you know, it's quite, it adds up to quite a lot of money. Obviously, the clubs had to install it as pipes underneath the ground. There's a lot of cost in actually getting it done, but you know, we're fortunate that we're, you know, maybe since I've come down here, it's got worse. But you know, the, the weather we don't actually have that many games that are, you know hit by the weather. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember the chairman saying to me there was a statistic when he first came about how few games had been cancelled um, in the, at the stadium at the Montgomery Waters Meadow anyway. Um, and I think it's not something we come across so very, o very often, luckily. Um, but certainly under soil heating for me is, you know, it's expensive to get it and it's a lot of money. And to be honest with you, if we were spending that kind of money, I would have think we would rather spend it in the playing budget than anything else. I guess with the forecast, Players are training today, so they managed to get a, a session in. Yeah. But cold weather over Thursday, Friday, yeah. going to Saturday. Yeah, I mean, if there's an area covered at the training ground, which is 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 okay for them to use today. It's, I mean, they don't need a, a, a pitch; they just need an area. Um, so they're okay for today. They'll obviously be off tomorrow. We'll monitor Thursday and Friday. I know Paul's concerned about the forecast for Thursday and Friday and the more cold weather. And um, what can you do to get get training on? Players don't like training in Astro turf either, which especially to heading towards a, a match day as well. So that's a training's a, a slight concern just now because everywhere's going to be frozen if the forecast is as it, as it says. Um, and then obviously Saturday as well. You know, but we'll monitor the forecast. Forecasts can change. Mm. Um, you know, they were expecting minus four last night and there was no frost in my car this morning, albeit it was a bit of snow. But you know, in some ways you're actually better getting snow than, than frost because you can at least shovel the, the snow away. You can't necessarily get rid of the frost so easily.